It's time for another podcast of the prodigal son. My prayers come out of Ephesians, the first chapter and the 15th verse. It says, ever since I heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called. He is holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your heart as you trust in him. Your roots will will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too hard to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life, power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. That is my earnest prayer for all of us, everyone that walks the face of this earth, that God would open the eyes of our understanding and guide us and direct us and show us just what he has in store for us if we'll just believe his word. Now, let's see what the word of God has to say today. Father, we praise you and we thank you, God, for your word. Use us for your honor and your glory. Holy Spirit, touch my mind, touch my mouth. Guide me in the direction you'd have me to go. I don't want to do anything of myself, but everything under the guidance and the direction of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for all we all we're doing in this podcast and all you're doing in this podcast and the guidance that you've given us. Lord, in everything we do, we'll give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. You know, I was reading in Romans this morning and you know, this scripture is a very familiar scripture and and it's one of the keys. To live in a Christian life. And if you'll do this, I promise you, you will will just excel in a Christian life. And it is walking by faith. And the Romans, the seventh, the first chapter in the 17th verse, it says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. God wants us to live by faith. He wants us to allow him to guide us and direct us and take us where we were supposed to go through his, through his Holy Spirit and guide and direct us in everything that we should do in our lives. Uh, Second Corinthians 5 and 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. 
God wants us to walk according to faith in Him. Not faith in what we see, not faith in, 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 in what's going on around us or in, in our abilities at all. No. He says to walk by faith, faith in Him and not by sight. You know, Proverbs, the third chapter, and the fifth and sixth verse, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. That is a, a faith walk. That is a life of faith. Trusting in the Lord with all your heart, and leaning not to our own understanding. You know, Hebrews eleven six. I want to go to it and read it because it's, it's something that, that, you know, I think everyone that strives to be or to live a Christian life wants more than anything to, to please God. But I don't think that they really realize how easy it is to please God if we have faith. It says, but without faith... It is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You know, we 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 walk, and we. I was uh, my entire adult life. I was taught you need to be. You know, you need to don't do this and don't do that and if you do this you need to repent and and it's just a, it was just a constant struggle a constant struggle because my, all my faith was wound up in how good I could be instead of having faith in God and like uh Mark 11 23 says if you if there's a mountain in front of you just paraphrasing if there's a mountain in front of you Speak to it and command it to be cast into the sea and not doubt in your heart, but believe that those things that you say shall come to pass and you shall have what you say. That's, that's, that's an essence of faith. Standing up and knowing without a doubt that what you believe, and that is the Word of God, that the Word of God is true. And there is nothing in the world going to stop you from accomplishing what you have set out to accomplish. That's living by faith. That's walking by faith and not by sight. You know, I talked about it at the jail here the other day, but Smith Wigglesworth, I think he's the one that said this. He said, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm moved by what I believe, and I believe the Word of God. Glory to his name. You know, that Smith Wigglesworth wasn't an educated man. He wasn't, he was a plumber, very, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, very limited in what he could read. But yet he heard God's word. He believed God's word. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I don't read my Bible silently anymore. Sometimes I do, but you know, nine times out of ten, I read it out loud. Why? So I can hear it. Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And if, if I'm going to, uh, the just shall live by faith. I want to be just in the eyes of God. So I'm believing every word of his, his book and walking by faith and not by sight. Not looking at my circumstances, but believing without a shadow of a doubt that that God will do exactly what He says He's supposed to do. He said He's going to do. I want to. I want you to go to Numbers. Now I, I quote this a lot, reference it a lot. But Romans, or I'm sorry, Numbers, the twenty ninth chapter and the nineteenth verse. It says, "God is not a man that He should lie." Now listen to this. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? I don't read you that in the New Living Translation. Because it's, it's really good what, it, what, the, what the Lord wants us to see and understand. It says, God is not a man, so he does not lie. 
He is not human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? I'm telling you what, God is going to do just exactly what he says in his word. Nothing more and nothing less. If he says you are healed, you are healed in Jesus' name. By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Now, whether or not you accept that healing and believe that and receive your healing is completely up to you. But I want you to understand that, know something, that you can count on God. You can count on his word and you can count on what he has said to you and about you in his word to be true. And you can take it to the bank. You say, well, I don't know if, well, you know, if I'm born again or not. Or if I, you, you may say, I've never uh, made Jesus the Lord of my life. I've never been born again. Well, that's the easy part. Romans 10 and 9 said, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Said, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. And then you say, well, you know, I want to I wanna, uh, please God. Have faith in him. Have faith in his word. Believe him. That's, that's, uh, that's my purpose in this podcast is to provoke people to believe God's word, not man's tradition. But believe God's word. Believe God's word today. Allow him to change your life. Allow him to just guide you and direct you into places that you thought you would never, ever go. And I promise you, it's true in my life and it's true in anybody's life that's ever allowed God to be real in their life. He'll take you places that you thought you would never see. He'll show you things that, he th- that you thought you'd never know, never realized it, never realized that gifts were there, that, that, that you, you, you had no idea that they were there. God will open your eyes, and he will open the eyes of your understanding, just like Ephesians 1 says. And he will guide you. And how will he do that? Through his precious word and by his Holy Spirit. If you've never been born again, today is the day. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Claim him as Lord of your life. Confess him as Lord of your life. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Won't you do that today and allow God to touch you and guide you through his word? Glory to his name. Go to our website. It's the-prodigalson.com. Let us know what God is doing in your life. If you've been born again through listening to this podcast, contact us. Tell us what God has done for you. We want to hear from you. We pray for you daily that, that God would bless you and touch you, and guide you through his word. That's what I want to make sure that I get across in this podcast, to believe God and believe his word. Touch, allow him to touch you and guide you in every direction of of your life. Go to our website. It's the-prodigalson. Let us know what what he's doing in your life. That's the-prodigalson.com prodigalson.com